Well, good evening. How's everyone doing today? Good? I feel like some of us, some of us are still asleep. Let's stand up and let's sing. Let's sing a, real, a chorus real quick for children's chorus. This is the day that the Lord has made. I think we all know this song, right? Before we get going on to the, what we actually have there. Uh, for tonight, this, this is, is the day, day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. Come on, children. We I will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. too low for me. <laughs> Ready? Let's go up a little bit, a step or two steps up, please. Ready? This, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I heard an old, old story how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary. And that's what's been getting spoken on this week, right? Salvation, what the Lord did for us. So let's sing this song with energy, with joy to the Lord. I heard an old, old story how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary. Was atoning, then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming precious blood. He loved me. And Punch me. 
Worshiping the Lord this evening. You're the word of God the Father from before the world began. Every star and every planet has been fashioned by your hand. All creation holds together by the power of your voice. Let the skies declare your glory, let the land and seas rejoice. You're the author of creation, you're the Lord of every man, and your cry of love rings out across the land. Yes, you left the gaze of angels. Save the lost and exchange the joy of heaven for the anguish of a cross. With a prayer you fed the hungry, with a word you stilled the sea. Yet how silently you suffered that the guilty may go free. You're the author of creation. You're the A shout you rose victorious, wrestling victory from the grave, and ascended into heaven, leading captives in your way. Now you stand before the Father, interceding for your own. From each tribe and tongue and nation, you are leading sinners home. You're the author of creation, you're the Lord of every man, and your cry of love rings out across the land. Thank you for your singing. You may be seated. Well, I want to welcome you tonight to our final Wednesday evening with Brother Young, and I want you to know that I'm just grateful you're here. You put yourself in a position to receive the grace of God through the Word of God, through the preacher of God, and if you have your cup out, I'm telling you this, you open your mouth wide and I will fill it. God will do that for you. I'll invite our ushers to come tonight, our last formal opportunity to give to the Lord to our speaker, and so I hope that you'll bless him and that you will give him a wonderful offering. I know that uh, he has ministered to the needs of many, and uh, I tell you what, that's a blessing, and we need, to, we need to give the laborer what he is due. Let's talk to the Lord. All is vain unless the Spirit of the Holy One come down. And so, Father, I pray that you would send the Spirit in fullness here. Lord, he's present because he's that which indwells believers. But, God, we want more than just his presence. We want his filling. And so tonight we bow our heads and we get low to the ground and we pray for the filling of the Holy Spirit. Give us peace. Lord, would you fill us with joy? Help us to know that you've made out a will in our favor and left us everything in Christ. Lord, I pray that you would bless us with sweet conviction. Tell our hearts, Father, where we're wrong and tell us how to make it right that we might be filled with the joy and the power and the sweetness of the Lord Jesus. Father, I pray 
that you'd come tonight and talk to each one of us. Where there's brokenness, would you heal? Where there's an unforgiving spirit, God, would you make a forgiving spirit? Where there's an angry heart, would you make a holy heart? Where there's an impure heart, God, would you make it a sweet, white as snow, heart that is pure? Lord, where there's a heart that is discouraged, would you encourage it? Whatever the needs of your people are, we pray that you would meet them through the book. Now, Lord, I'm so thankful for Dave Young. I thank you that you brought him here. And may this offering be blessed by the Lord. May we give back what we have all been given. In the name of Jesus, amen. One final breath he gave As heaven looked away The Son of God was laid In darkness A battle in the grave The war of death was waged The power of hell forever broken rolled away his perfect love could not be overcome now death where is your sting our resurrected king has rendered you defeated forever he is glorified not be overcome now death where is your sting our resurrected king has rendered you defeated forever he is glorified forever Hallelujah. 
hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, the Lamb has overcome, we sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, forever he is glorified. You can stand up with me again. This uh, afternoon, I was able to give, uh, do a discipleship lesson with someone, and we were talking about creation and how creation was made to glorify the Lord. And so let's glorify Him tonight in our singing.
praise the Lord for that. He is worthy of our worship. He is worthy of our praise. Sometimes we cheer louder for a sports team or for something we're watching or a game. But I think God deserves all the glory and all the honor. And he's so good to us. Amen. He's so good to us. Thank you. You may be seated. You know, one of these services, we all just come in and sing the whole time. It's wonderful to sing with your church family and uh, tell one another, speak to one another. Jesus is in control and he knows what he's doing. Who gives him counsel when he's dealing with you now? Well, I, I know that if you're like me, we've been blessed this week. Would you say amen? amen? Brother Dave, thank you. It's been our privilege to have you here. And uh, I think sometimes we, uh, we take for granted the privilege to be able to come and gather and just hear the preaching of the Word of God. And, you know, as I heard him look last night and tell people, God loves you. It's like a, 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 a hug, but it's a bear hug, you know, and that uh, comes with the truth. And so I, I want to just ask this, though. If you're here and you don't know you're on your way to heaven, would you just get your ears on to listen? And if you're here and you got needs, our God's ready to meet those needs. Just open your heart. Brother Dave, you come. Kids, you can be dismissed out the back, right? Four years old through sixth grade. So uh, out the back. Brother Dave, you come. Amen. Praise the Lord. Music has been awesome this week, hasn't it? And it's just been such a delight and a privilege to serve you guys this week and to be a part of your church family. And thank you so much for welcoming us and uh, treating us royally. Just uh, what, a, what a joy, what a blessing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Pastor, I just am so grateful you invited me and just really honored by that. And uh, what, a, what a delight. I'm enjoying getting to know you all. A lot of new faces this week and made some new friends this week. I've, I've just been so blessed. So thank you. How many of y'all have a copy of the Bible, do you? How many of you have a red Bible, do you? Everybody ought to read their Bible. Say amen to that. <laughs> and uh, so get your red Bible and find the book of Ephesians tonight. Ephesians, if you would please. Ephesians chapter 3. And while you're turning, just to tell you a couple of things. First of all, uh, I hope you'll pray for our family. We, uh, this is almost 31 years we've been traveling, preaching revivals, family camps, summer camps, missions trips. I'll be... Uh, just here, I think it's now four weeks away. I'll be in Malawi, Africa for 10 days preaching. And then uh, we've got meetings uh, literally all over the country in the next three months. The next three months, I'll be in Washington State. I'll be in New Hampshire. I'll be in Florida. I'll be in Colorado. And uh, those are just all over the place. And God's just so good to us. If you'd like to follow our ministry, uh, there's, uh, you could go to our website. Uh, I'm Evangelist Dave Young. So it's evangelistdaveyoung.com, and on the opening page of that, you'll see a little button there that says sign up for the newsletter, and just give me, put an email address in there, and uh, I'd be happy to include you. I, I uh, send out a newsletter, sometimes after a really great meeting, and I probably will after this one, because I've just enjoyed the singing, I've enjoyed the fellowship, I've been thrilled at how many people profess faith in Christ this week. And so I just want to tell people about that. So I'll be writing about that here probably the next couple of days. And then you just pray for us as we travel. I go from here to St. Louis. And while I'm in St. Louis, Bethley leaves early tomorrow morning, my sweetheart. And she'll be heading to Clarksburg, West Virginia. There's like 9 or 10 or 12 churches getting all their ladies together. And she's going to be teaching the ladies there. And I'm excited about that. Then she'll join me over in St. Louis uh, late on Sunday. And we'll have a revival meeting there all next week. Then we're in Florida. And then we go to North Carolina for a family conference, then we're back to Florida, and then that's when I leave for, uh, for uh, Malawi, Africa, and uh, just busy day. So you pray for us. Bethany and I also podcast. I haven't said a lot about that at all this week, but my wife and I, once a week, we do a 30-minute podcast in which we, we title it, it, it's called Keeping It Young. We're the youngs, so we're not keeping it real, we're keeping it young. And I came up with that myself. That's pretty impressive, wasn't it? <laughs> keeping it young. So we're the keepingityoungpodcast.com, and you can go right to that website, listen to over 230-minute sessions on the family. And Beth and I teach those together. We sit down in a studio, and we talk and teach on the family. We cover everything from menopause, isn't that a blessing, to the midlife crisis, 
to raising children, to how to happy, happy marriage, conflict resolution, that's keeping it young. If you do Spotify or Apple or anything like that, anywhere you find podcasts, you'll find the keeping it young. And you'd be, you know, you're welcome to join us that way. Pastor said I could tell you about that. So I'm certainly honored and happy to do so. I hope you'll take advantage of it. And if we can serve you in some way, just reach out to us. Our, our ministry is people. And uh, I, if I can, if, I pray, if there's something I can pray with you about, uh, people write me often and say, will you pray about it? And I promise you, uh, we stop and we do pray. In fact, this week it was just really special. There's two guys I know that have been asking me to pray about their cancer with them. And uh, we've been praying about them in our family devotions in the evenings. We've prayed for Barry. And uh, just uh, several times we've mentioned Barry to the Lord. And uh, what a great delight. We, uh, my, my daughter-in-law, her brothers, got, uh, had a battle with cancer. And both of them, on the same day this week, went to get their checkup. And both of them reported from the doctor that they're clear of cancer. And uh, so I just love having a part in that. It's not my battle, but I got to pray along with them. And, uh, and I got to rejoice when God answered the prayer. So I just love it, love it, love it. I'm honored to serve you. Thank for bringing your children to Jake and Charity. Uh, it's uh, uh, just a special privilege for them to have an impact in your children as well. And we don't take any of this for granted. I really am just, I'm just amazed that God's people treat us so kindly. So thank you for that. And uh, I'm happy to preach one more service for you this week. How about Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 14 again? Are you starting to get these words in your heart? I, uh, I, I haven't done them justice, but I've tried to give you at least little highlights here of these. So let's read again, verse 14 through verse 21. For this cause I bow my knees. Catch that little phrase tonight. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Say it with me. Amen. Aren't these great words? They're wonderful. And uh, you've been a gracious audience as we've talked this week about a lot of stuff in this revival. If you remember, Sunday school seems like a long time ago, doesn't it? But in Sunday school, we talked about the word quicken. In the morning service, we talked about the word call. In the evening service, we talked about the word strength. Monday night, about the word growth. And last night, we talked about the word full. Now tonight, tonight, I want to preach the message, one more message from this, and I'm going to simply entitle it. It's pretty simple, but I want to entitle it tonight, The Praying We Need. We have talked about the strength we need and the quickening we need and the calling we need and the growth we need and the fullness we need, but let's go one step farther tonight. Put all of it together in a thought there. How many of you agree that last night was right? Paul is praying that we'll be full of the Spirit. How many of y'all agree with that? You agree with that? And he's praying that we'll be full of Jesus. Could you see it that way? Is it okay to see it that way? And we would be full of love. That was no doubt a part of the prayer. And that we would be full of God. Do you also get the idea that he's talking here about being full of prayer? Because don't you just, don't you just love that verse 20? Verse 20 is just glorious. Unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly. Exceeding abundantly. Exceeding abundantly. How do you, how do you, how do you add to that? Exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask. That's enough, isn't it? But he says, or thee. Is that just not glorious? Do y'all do find that interesting? Uh, there, there's a lot of things I can ask for, but there's things I could think that I'm not going to pray about. You know, that's, that's too big. Because Pastor said, I got some big trees. I'm like, that's big, that's big, that's really big. I can think about it, but I feel uncomfortable asking you. Well, Paul just wants you to know, there's nothing you can think that's too big for our God. It's just a glorious little verse, isn't it? And, and, and I just want to talk that on this final service about, about you in prayer, about the praying we need. How many of y'all believe in prayer? Could we start there? Do y'all believe in prayer? Just out of curiosity, do you have a favorite answer to prayer? Just You don't have to answer that out loud. But, but are, are, maybe several, are there some favorites? You say, boy, boy, that was a prayer request, and wow, God did it. Anything in your life like that? My grandpa Trinum was that way. Uh, he left my mom when she was three, walked out of her life, never came back. She never knew her daddy. When I was a grown man, married with children, I thought, reckon my grandpa's alive. I don't even know his name. So I called my mom and said, what, is your, what was your dad's name? 
And she told me, and I got to do some research and, and found a family member that was living in Tennessee and connected somehow there with him. I can't remember all the details I did. And found out he's, my grandpa is alive and lives in Los Angeles, California. So I got a phone number and called him. It was kind of awkward, you know. So I called this, this old man answers the phone, and I said, is your name Elmer Trenum? And he's like, uh, yeah. And I said, well, hey, I'm Dave Young, and I think I'm your grandson. And there's this like, oh, you know, because it's a weird world we live in. You all know that, don't you? And uh, sure enough, I went out and took him out to eat. He likes, uh, he likes to eat uh, hamburgers at uh, Red Robin. That was one of his, he always wanted to go to Red Robin, eat a hamburger, fries, and a Coke. He'd drink a Coke. And I'd take him out to eat. Found out he had a lot of money. I had no idea as a boy that I had relatives with money. I had no idea. I thought we were all as poor as dirt. But Grandpa Trenum had money. I'm telling you, he was loaded. I got him reacquainted with my mom after I met him. He was in his 70s. He's, uh, you know, he's old. He, he's legally blind, legally deaf, that kind of stuff. And lives by himself. He never remarried. And, and he had a good job, then retired from it. And went to, Actually, when he retired, he's legally blind, legally deaf. He retired from the car industry in Pontiac, Michigan. Bought himself a convertible Cadillac and drove himself from Michigan to Los Angeles with no driver's license, legally blind, and legally deaf. Now, that is a scary thought, isn't it? And got out there and sold his Cadillac and had a time, you know, in Los Angeles, you know, by himself. So I got him reacquainted to my mom. And on her, I think it was her 60th birthday, she didn't know her daddy. She didn't have any clue. He, she never heard anything from him. But on her 60th birthday, he wrote her a letter and sent her a check for $25,000. Man, I sat down and wrote him a letter myself. I said, Grandpa, my birthday's February 12th. And, uh, you know, just in case, you know. And I didn't really do that because I didn't want his money. I just wanted to get to know him. And I talked to him about Jesus. And to be honest, he ran me off. He, I'd call him, talk about Jesus. So he, he called the phone company, had him unplug his phone. And this guy's just ornery. I'd have some preacher friends in Los Angeles go visit him. One of my preacher friends went out there to visit him and knocked on his door. And he came downstairs and said, now look, call my grandson and tell him to stop sending preachers out here. I've had enough of you guys. And here's what we did every night in family devotion. We close every day with prayer and just a brief devotion. We're not weird about it. Just some time with the Lord. Our family's done this for years. I always say to the kids, all right, what do you want to pray for tonight? And somebody may say, well, pray for my test tomorrow. Or, you know, but this one came up all the time. Pray for great-grandpa Trenum. He needs to be saved. We prayed all through his 70s. We watched him get into his 80s. He hit 90. And to be honest, I began to think, there's no way. He can't talk. He can't hear. You've got to yell at him to talk to him. Just before he died, he died when he was 97. I went out to see him, and he was in hospice care, and I walked into his room, and I was like, hey, Grandpa, it's Dave. He goes, how do you know Dave? And I said, no, I am Dave. Oh, he said, Dave's a nice guy, isn't he? I finally just gave up and joined him. Yeah, he's a pretty nice guy. And, and I asked, God, is he ever going to get saved? Is he ever? It's my big prayer request. God, is he ever going to get saved? When he was 92, my children were going to West Coast Baptist College, in Lancaster, California, and a friend of ours on the campus had a car. She drove down and picked up my grandpa, brought him up to the campus to see his grandchildren, and uh, literally his great-grandchildren. And he came on the campus. Lancaster Baptist Church is a large building. And she said, well, let me show you around. And he's on his walker, you know, he's 92. And she brought him in the back of the auditorium. And he said to my friend Nicole, he said, you know, Nicole, he said, I haven't been in a church building since 1946. I think that's what he said. I was like, forever. And he said, Nicole, he said, you know that saved thing everybody keeps talking to me about? He said, I can't sleep. I go to bed at night and all I can think about is this saved thing. And if I go to sleep, he said, I dream about it. And I don't know what to make about that. It just run with it. If I go to sleep, he said, I dream about it. And he said to my friend, Nicole, maybe I ought to get that settled. Do you think you can help me with it? He was 92. He got saved. That was my big answer to prayer. That's exceeding abundantly above all that I could ask or think. I, I really, you know, I'm praying, but I wasn't sure God, he's getting old now. I don't know if he's ever going to get saved. He got saved, he was 92, and then he started going to church. He was 93, then he was 94, then he was 95, then he was 96. I, I, I used to joke and say, we, we tried to get him saved so he could go to heaven, and then he wouldn't go. <laughs> he just get, kept hanging around, and, and COVID hit, and, and then, you know, he, he was not able to go to church in California because of COVID. And uh, then uh, he passed into eternity. That was a huge prayer request. Do you have one like that? The, the Bible's right here, isn't it? God answers prayer. Do you all believe that, church family? God answers prayer. 
And here's what I love about this. What he's praying here about is, is so many things, and I can't help but think one of the points he's making in his prayer is that we ought to look to a God that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Here's the question I, I want to address with you tonight, and it's just how can we be full of prayer, okay? Now, I, I found four answers in the text, and, and this meeting will come to an end. And, and here's the first one. Did you see that in verse 14? I tried to highlight it to you. Here's how Paul begins his prayer. He says, for this cause I, catch this now, I bow my knees. Now, now look, church family, I don't want to go farther than the text intends it to go, but there's a lesson I've learned in this passage about this. You, you do know this, don't you? There are varying levels of prayer. Did you know that? For, for instance, does the Bible say this? The Bible says, pray without, how I many you know the word? Pray without ceasing. So what does that mean? You can pray anywhere, anytime, about anything. Is that sensible? You agree with that? Answer these, all right? Can you pray while you're doing dishes? These are yes or no. Answer out loud. Can you pray while you're doing dishes? Sure. Can you pray while you're mowing the yard? Absolutely. Can you pray while you're driving? If you live around here, you should. Can I get an amen right there, okay? So you can pray anywhere. You can pray. You can pray while you're running a combine. You, you, you can pray, you know, while you're working out. You can pray anywhere, anytime, about anything. But there is a level of praying that's different than that. You know that, don't you? Here's what Paul said. Watch this. Now watch this. This is so simple, but don't miss it. Paul said, uh, in this prayer, this is what I'm doing. In this prayer, I bow the knee. That's a different level of praying, isn't it? There's, there's varying levels of prayer. You can pray while you're walking, while you're talking. And it's not that one is more important necessarily than the other, but I can't help but think there is something about this that affects me. When I take the time, my dear friends, to kneel, to take something to God on my knees, I, I really do believe that's a different level of praying. And, and let's just be practical. Can I just be real practical for just a moment? I think there's at least four elements I would draw your attention to in prayer. And, and maybe that's all we could learn from this phrase, bow the knee. Just practical elements in prayer. Prayer, uh, this kind of praying involves a place maybe, a time perhaps, a posture, and, and maybe even a list. Now, I, I don't want to go any beyond, just, just practical here just a moment, and then we'll go to verse 20 and, and draw things right out of that text. But, but how many of you know that there is a sense in which there's a level of praying that involves a specific location? Are you aware of that? Because Jesus said this, y'all remember this? Y'all are church folks, so you know this. Jesus said, when you pray, enter into your closet and do so okay now I didn't finish it just for sake of time I'm just illustrating there when you pray go to your closet you, you see that mirrored in scripture like in Daniel's life Do you remember the book of Daniel I, I love the Daniel's one of my favorite books of the Bible and uh, Daniel twice in the book of Daniel you find Daniel's house and what I love about it Daniel's single he's not married he has no family he's, he's alone but he has a house and both times you find his house in the book of Daniel, there's prayer there. The first one, first one, is when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and Daniel were going to be killed because the Nebuchadnezzar dreamed a dream. And he said, I don't want to know the interpretation. I want you to tell me what I dream. And they said, nobody can do that. That's not possible. And Daniel said, that's right. That's not possible. But just give us a little time to meet with our God. So he goes to his house with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they meet with God at the house, have a prayer meeting, and God tells Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego exactly what King Nebuchadnezzar prayed. And, and you ought to read it sometime, because it's, it's one of those passages that'll put you on shouting ground, because they go into Nebuchadnezzar, and, and Daniel says this, I love this, Daniel goes to Nebuchadnezzar, and he says to Nebuchadnezzar, hey, you know what you ask us to do? There's not a man alive that can do that. But, he says, I love this, there is a God in heaven. Does that not just, does that not just like, you know, you know, make, you know, make the hair stand up on your arms? There is a God in heaven, and that ought to just thrill you tonight. You got a need in your life? Say, this isn't possible. Can I just say something to you? There is a God in heaven. Are we in a messed up generation? Absolutely. But can I just echo the words of Daniel to Nebuchadnezzar? There is a God in heaven. And that ought to put you on shouting ground tonight. That ought to just stir your soul that my God is real. Kids, you teens in the building that have been in chapel this week, I'm here to tell you that's the God I've been telling you about. He's real. He does miracles. And you ought to get to him in prayer. What a glorious truth. Y'all with me on this? There's a place. My Papa Young, that, my Grandpa Trina was mom's dad. Papa Young, my dad's father, Papa Young was a moonshiner. 
And, uh, and I'm, I'm not even joking. He was. He's a moonshiner. And he was brutal. He was a brutal, godless, wicked man. Brutal. My grandpa, uh, grandpa Young, Papa Young, when he was probably in his late 40s, somewhere around 50, he went to a revival meeting. And he heard the gospel that a Savior named Jesus died on the cross for his sins and was buried and rose again the third day. And my Papa Young came to Jesus believed in Jesus, turned to Jesus, trusted in Jesus, and he was saved. You know what, he lived to be, I don't know, it was almost 80. Papa Young never read the Bible in his life because he never, ever learned to read. Never went to school one day in his life, ever. Didn't know the alphabet, could not sign his own name, never wrote a letter, never signed a document. He, he just absolutely had no education of any kind at all. But he got saved, and they, they were poor as dirt. My daddy was still at home. He was an older teenager. And, and, and every morning, the boys would milk cows by hand down at the, the dairy barn. They had no electricity. They had milk by hand. And, and then, then, you know, every evening, they had milk by hand. My dad told me several years ago, he said, you know, son, after Papa got saved, milking would be done in the morning, and he'd say to us boys, all right, guys, run home now, get breakfast, get ready for school. You've got to catch the bus. And tell your mom, I'll be there in a little bit. And, and dad said he would do the same thing every evening after milking. He'd say, all right, boys, run home. You can go ahead and start supper. Tell mom I'll be there in a little bit. And my dad said, what's he doing? Milking is over. The cows are fed. We're done. And my dad said he made a circle around the barn when he came back around. He didn't go in to eat. He went, what's Papa doing in there? What's dad doing in there? And, and my dad said, your Papa, in the corner of the dairy barn, had built himself an altar. And every morning when milking was done, he'd send us boys out, and you could see, you could see my dad. My, my dad told me, I could see my dad in there on his knees. That was my papa on his knees, and that was his place. See, there's a place in this. Paul says, I, watch this, I bow my knees. That, 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 that's, there's a location to do that. Jesus said, in the closet, there's a time. Daniel, later in the book of Daniel, the Bible tells us that there was a writing sign by the king. You can't ask any petition of anybody but the king for 30 days. No praying, no talking to any god but the king for 30 days. You'll remember what happened, don't you? Daniel went to his house, opened his windows toward Jerusalem, got on his knees, catch that, got on his knees, and, and, and prayed toward Jerusalem three times a day. And here's a King James Version word. Prayed three times a day on his knees, as he had done, the Bible says, a four time. Y'all know that old word? Here's the idea of it. The idea of it is that, that, that here's, this is Daniel's habit. What does Daniel do? Three times a day, he's got a place. Three times a day, there's a time. Three times a day, he kneels. And three times a day, he talks to God with thanksgiving in his house. You see all that's combining together? What a lesson for me and you. You know what I think we need more of in our generation? We need more people who will slow down enough to find a place to regularly meet with God and pray big prayers and, and, and be urgent with God about things. You know, it's all over the Bible, don't you? And, and think about all the things we've got to pray for. Jesus said when you pray, pray like this. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. We've got to pray about the kingdom. We've got to praise God. Hallowed be thy name. We've got to pray about the kingdom. Thy kingdom come. We've got to pray about God's will being done on earth. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We've even got to pray about things like forgiveness. Anybody here struggle with people? Come on, over here with us. Is there, is there anybody in your life that just drives you nuts? Come on, we're in church. You can be honest. Anybody, anybody here like that? I, I, I just can't handle it. I'll tell you what he needs. He needs a good whooping. That's what he needs. And you know what? We've got we to gotta pray about stuff like that. Because sometimes things happen in our life. We get bitter and angry at people. And Jesus said this. You ought to pray about that, he said. You ought to pray, uh, Lord, uh, forgive my trespasses as I forgive others that trespass against me. And, and we've got to pray about all of this stuff. Somebody said, I don't know if I can pray about that or not. Well, pray about that. God is real. Say, Lord, I don't know if I can pray about this or not. I'm really bothered about this. And you've got to help me, God, because I can't do this. God is real. See, it's about having a prayer life. There's a posture involved in it. That's why I said, that, that's why I drew your attention to this. He said, I bow my knees. I don't want to go farther than what Paul was going. But what an illustration for me and you. He got on his knees for prayer. Teenagers, some of you have never prayed on your knees, but it'd be good for you. Maybe, maybe it's been a long time, Mom and Dad, since you took some time to kneel. Some of you got some real big needs in your life. Now, you, now don't, don't, don't be legalistic about it. If you're older now and getting on your knees means you're never getting up again, well, God knows that. Don't be weird about it. 
God knows that, but if you can kneel, there's nothing wrong. It's good to do so. It's not the only way to pray. Y'all know that, don't you? There's a lot of postures involved in prayer. Y'all know that. My friend David Tice is in Las Vegas, Nevada, and I went out to, pray, uh, to preach for him years ago for the first time, and he caught me like, Pastor and I pray together all the time, and, and I love praying with Pastor. I just love to, to pray with Pastor. It's one of my favorite things about our meeting. And, uh, and, I, and, and Pastor Tice out there in Vegas, Brother Tice said, uh, hey, before we go out there and preach, just, just run back to my office, let's pray. So I go back in his office, we get in his office, and, uh, and this cracked me up. We talked just for a moment, we're standing here looking at each other, and he says, all right, Brother Yang, so let's have a word of prayer, because service about to start. And so I bowed my head, you know, like this, and when I did, I heard this commotion. I said, what in the world? So I opened my eyes, and he was flat on his face. He was like, boom, flat on his face. And then I panicked, like, what do I do? You know, <laughs> do, I, do I join him? You know, uh, do I stand here? <laughs> I wasn't sure what to do. I would, you know, and, and everybody's different. There's a pastor in Alabama. He cracks me up because uh, when I go to his church preach revival, don't judge me on this. All right, nobody here with us. We're just friends, aren't we? Nobody here with us. And, and I go back and, and he always wanted to pray with me and the deacons. Let's go back here and pray. We go back behind the stage to pray before the service. And he always wanted to hold my hands while we pray. So he'd always be like, "All right, let's pray." And then all, all the men would hold hands. And it just, it just, I was like, I don't even know you men. And uh, so I had to, I had to really work on that. So, you know, I learned what I'd do is i go back there, and I knew we were going to pray, and I knew he wanted to hold my hand. So he'd start, let's pray, and i go, now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I come into your presence. And uh, i just beat him, and i just get my hands together before he could grab my hand, all right? See, there's a variety of ways of praying. You know what I mean by that, don't you? You can kneel. Uh, if you're a man, I love this one. Now, this scares Baptists to death. But if you're a man, if you're a man, I read this in the Bible, Paul said, I would that you men, the word is literally males, I would that men pray everywhere. You ready for this? Lifting up holy hands. That's scary, and they're like, Baptists don't do that. What do you think we are, Pentecostal? Now, you all know this, don't you? Pentecostals may be wrong about something, but it is not because they do this. Did you know that? Because this is actually biblical. Now, I know you don't have, the Bible never commands us that we, you know, if you don't raise your hands, you are not right with God. But the Bible does say you can pray raising your hands. You know what I do often in a service now? Because I caught myself several years ago, pastor say, okay, let's open the service in prayer, and bow my head. Just kind of wait for him to finish praying. And I thought one day, you know what? He's praying. and Well, I might as well pray with him. So often in a service, I'll, I'll put my hands up. When I go to a restaurant, just because I'm so used to praying. How many times have I prayed at a table? A lot of times I'll go to a restaurant now, Pastor, and I'll say, all right, let's pray. And I'll put my hands up in a restaurant. I say, are you trying to go to attention? No, I'm trying to be biblical. He says, I will that men pray everywhere. Somebody said, well, that's cultural. How many of y'all know there's cultural things in the Bible? Did y'all know that? I think there are. Like I read in the Bible. You read this in your Bible? I read in the Bible that men, we are to greet one another with a holy kiss. I've been in your church four days. Not one man has greeted me with a holy kiss. And I want to stand on this platform before Almighty God and say, praise the Lord. <laughs> Are y'all following me? See, that, that, that's cultural, maybe. But even if it's cultural, it wouldn't be wrong, would it? It wouldn't be wrong. It's, it'd be a little awkward for our culture, but it wouldn't be wrong because the Bible permits that. So this, isn't, this may be awkward for somebody, but it might be a good way for you to start praying if your hands are holy. I was in one church in Alabama. And uh, they had this fellowship time. You know, some churches do this thing about, you know, now take this, while they play the next verse, turn around and shake hands with people and tell them you love them in the name of Jesus. And everybody's shaking hands and hugging necks, you know. And I'm thinking, you know, they did this a long time. And I'm like, okay, now, th you know, five minutes right now is a big difference at 8.15, okay. And so I can pick this up because get me on the platform. And I was on the front row and this older man came down the aisle. And this is the absolute truth. I thought he was coming in for a hug, but he was not. The man came right in and gave me a smooch and a half. I'm just like, mm, 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 and I, I was so dumbfounded. I was like, that man just kissed me. And, 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 I, and then after he kissed me, he opened up my coat and put something in my pocket of my, my suit coat. And I didn't even remember he did that because I, so, you know, I was so startled by the kiss. And I was like, what in the world, you know? And it really caught me off guard. And I got back to my RV, like, you know, after the service ended, and we had a great service, it's a great church. And I got back to the RV, and, and I was telling my kids about it. I said, well, you know, that guy put something in my pocket. And I'd already undressed, and I ran up to the RV closet there, and I pulled out my coat pocket, and I reached in, there was an envelope in there, and I'm not making this up. In that envelope, he gave me, <clears throat> gave me $1,000. So the next night, I was like, where is he? Praise God. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, bring it on. That's my rule now. You, come on, if you want a little kiss, we got to... 
you know, there's a connection here, all right, just for the record. And, and, and this is a little silly, isn't it? But notice, there's a posture here. that The Bible doesn't list the knees as the only, but it's a good thing for you to stop in a place, invest some time, maybe on your knees or sitting in the presence of God, and maybe using a list. Do you suppose Daniel had a list here? Because he prays and he says, now here's, here's what I want to pray about. I want you to be strengthened with might, God. Strengthen them with might by your spirit in the inner man. Oh, Lord, let Jesus dwell in their heart by faith. Lord, help them to walk in your love and be full of love. Oh, Lord, help them to be full of you. You almost get the idea he's praying through a list. I don't know that he was, but sometimes it's good to do so. Grandpa Trinum was on my list for years. And it was a glorious day when I could get on my knees in my prayer time and take out a pen and draw a line through that request. Grandpa is saved. Praise the Lord. Draw a line there. I just love writing things down and praying about it until God does it. And then I can just draw a line. Man, look at that. That's my God. We need that. So how do you all agree? Now, here's just practical elements. It's bow the knee. But notice there's three other things and we're out of time. This, this will be fast. Look at, look at the point of verse 20. There's a little lesson we can learn in verse 14. I bow my knees. But notice in verse 20, now unto him that is able. My dear friends tonight, know that God is able. First Baptist Church, can I just say to you, God is able. Uh, are, are there needs in this town? Y'all talk to me. I don't live here, but are there needs in this town spiritually? Are the forces of hell at work in this town? Are there spiritual darkness and principalities at work in this town? Did you know God is bigger than all of that? I don't understand this, and I hope this won't offend you, but uh, some people get bothered about this. But I, I, there's something I've read in the Bible, and, and I think I'm right about it. And if you think I'm wrong, we can talk about it, and we'll still part as friends, all right? But I was reading the Lord's Prayer. The Bible says, when you pray, pray like this. Jesus said this now. When you pray, pray like this. He said, um, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I read that one day and stopped there and I thought, what in the world does that mean? Oh Lord, oh Lord, would your will be done on earth just like it is in heaven? There's all kinds of things I think is implied by that verse. I, I, I've inferred from that verse these, these thoughts. Number one, apparently God's will is always done in heaven. Does that make sense? Y'all feel me on that? We can all agree with that one, can't we? Apparently God's will is always done in heaven. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Apparently all the time, God's will is done in heaven. No wonder heaven is so wonderful. God's will is always done there. No wonder they had sing songs when I was a kid like, Won't it be wonderful there? And how beautiful heaven must be. I love those songs. It's true, because God's will is always done there. But could we not infer from the verse that Jesus tells us to pray there that God's will is not always done on earth? That part I don't understand. If I'm to pray about it, it implies it's not happening. I wonder, is there a lesson there? I don't know how far to go with that. Is it possible that in the, the realm of darkness, in the spiritual warfare of a world where the forces of hell are, uh, are at work to destroy, to, to steal, to kill, to do, is it possible that, that somehow, this is what I don't understand, that somehow when we do this, somehow that works in the spiritual realm to help God's will to be done on earth. I, I, I can't, friends, that's holy ground. I can't explain that to you. No wonder, no wonder the enemy gets us too busy to pray. No wonder he gets us discouraged. No, no wonder he wants us to hold on to unforgiveness so that our prayers will be hindered. No wonder he's always trying to beat the daylights out of us so that we don't even feel like praying, don't want to pray, don't have enough faith to pray. Why? Because somehow God's will being done on earth is connected to our praying. How powerful is that? No, know that he is able. There is nothing happening in your life and in your family. Almighty God knows about it, cares about it, and is able to move in response to your praying. Know that God is able. Think about all the things God has done. Think about it. 
All the times they prayed in the Bible. They prayed about it, God did it. 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 Over and over. Miracles are all over the Bible. Go home tonight and read Matthew chapter 8 and just go to bed with a happy heart because Matthew 8 is just full of the things Jesus did in, in answer to requests. Remember the leper? Matthew chapter 8, the leper. Lord, can I just paraphrase it? Lord, if you want to, you can make me clean. And the Lord Jesus said, well, I want to. Be clean. Is that not just glorious? Come on, is that not just glorious? And then the, 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 there's the centurion, you know. My servant is sick, and oh, Lord, you can heal him. And all right, the Lord said, I'll come to your house. And he, oh, no, 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 no. I don't want to bother you. I know you're busy. Just say the word. Say the word, and I know he'll be healed. And Jesus said, oh, my goodness, I have not met this kind of faith anywhere. And he said, Go on home, buddy. Your servant is healed. Is this not glorious? And then they, remember, this, I, I can't give it all to you, but remember they get in the boat, they get in the boat, and Jesus goes to sleep, and the storm comes, and there's lightning and thunder, and they're terrified, they're terrified, they're terrified. The lightning's flashing all around, we're going we're gonna to get zapped, we're going to die. And they go back to Jesus, and they say, Lord, don't you care? You're back here, don't you care that we perish? And you remember Jesus, don't you? Do you remember this? Jesus says, uh, man, man, boys, come on. Don't you have any faith at all? He said, remember that? Don't you have any faith at all? I'm paraphrasing. And I don't know why. I, I wasn't there. But I'm, I, I can imagine Jesus turning around to the storm. And he's like, hey, simmer down. You're scaring my disciples. And the Bible says the winds and waves calm down. Just, just like that, boom, just calm. Don't you, know, don't you know that same God is the God we're praying to? Say, Dave, I've prayed for my family for a long time. Be encouraged tonight. He is able. There's a spiritual warfare. Say, Dave, I prayed for my son for 20 years. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't let the devil discourage you. You know why? Because your praying may be the only thing standing between your child who's far from God and the forces of hell absolutely, ultimately destroying him. Prayer makes a difference. Know he is able. Know that. Believe that. Know he is able. But look at what we learn in here. Ask in faith. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we what? We ask. We ask. So you've got to ask in faith. Don't, don't you love Paul's writings? Paul, Paul I, think, I don't know how Paul was. I can't wait to meet him in heaven. But I get the idea he was kind of excitable. You know what I mean with that? I, I just get the idea he was excitable. Because when he talks, he, 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 uh, he, he, things get bigger. Like he tells about getting saved in the book of Acts. And, and he's like, you know, there was, a, there was a light that shone from heaven. And I got saved. And then later he was like, you know, there was a great light that shone from heaven the day I got saved. And then later he tells it again. He's like, you know, there was this exceeding great light that shone from heaven, and I got saved. I just, I like that. And Paul could have just said here, now unto him that is able to do what we ask. No, he got all excited about it. Now unto him that is able to do above what we ask. And he just gets more, oh, wait a minute. Oh, uh, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. I used to say this phrase all the time on the last night of our revivals. I, I, and, and it just became a habit. I meant every word of it, but I guess it did become a habit. And I would just say, church, thank you, thank you. What a great week. And I would say, you guys have gone above and beyond this week and how you've treated her. You've gone above and beyond. I'd say that all the time. You've gone above and beyond how you treated our family. And, and I have kids. And in one revival, my, my charity was this tiny little thing at the time. She's up front, and she's seated by the pastor's daughter. And I was as sincere as the day is long. And I'm like, you guys have gone above and beyond in how you've treated us. And out loud, my little charity goes, he says that every Friday night. <laughs> it was like, what in the world? And I guess she was right, so I had to really rethink that a little bit. But Paul's not just saying words. He's writing by inspiration of the Spirit of God that you and I can bow the knee and know that God is able and ask in faith. You know what it means to ask in faith? Have you ever, you ever meditated on this? L look, look at this just a moment and, and think about this. Praying in faith, and I'm done shortly. Praying in faith is confidence that God is almighty. Do you all believe God is almighty? Praying in faith is confidence. God is able. God can. He's almighty. I can pray about anything because God can. It's also trust that God is good. I, I can pray in faith with great confidence, but at the same time trusting that God is good and whatever his plan is, is okay. 
And, and, and I can pray with an awareness that prayer does work. That's what it means to pray in faith. How many of y'all believe God can heal? Let me illustrate it. How many of y'all believe God can heal? Do y'all believe that? Did you know that everybody in the Bible that was healed died? Everybody Jesus healed died. So what it tells us is all healing is apparently temporary. Is that, is that fair enough? Because they all died. And, 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 and yet, yet, the Bible invites us. The Bible says that, that if any man is sick among you, call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him. So we can pray big, can't we? Okay, Lord, whatever it is. Lord, I need this. God, I got cancer. I don't know what it would be for you. But Lord, let's just illustrate it. You say, Lord, I got cancer. Well, okay, pray in faith. Go to God and, and just be real with God. Say, God, I know that you can heal my cancer. And I don't care how you do it. If you want to heal me miraculously, woo, I'll praise you. If you want to heal me with medicine, woo, I'll praise you. I know you can. But I also know that you're good and I can trust you. So God... If you give me this cancer because it's the method you're going to use to get me to heaven to be with you, I just want you to know, God, I'm okay with that. You all believe in heaven? I mean, honestly, do you? Really, genuinely believe in heaven? You all believe we're going to die and go to be with God in a place called heaven? Do you all believe that? Man, you can't scare us with heaven, can you? You can't scare me with heaven. I just, I, I don't, I'm not planning to go there tonight. Then it's God's will, I'm okay. You know what heaven is like, don't you? No sin, no suffering, no sorrow, no sickness, no crying, no disease, no turmoil, no tragedy, no family problems. All is well in heaven, in the land that is fairer than day. Are you all with me tonight? This is real. Don't you feel sorry for Lazarus in the Bible? He died. Four days later, Jesus brought him back. I almost have to feel sorry for the guy. I, don't, I can't prove this, but pastor, I think he came out of the tomb, and I think he was like, seriously? I can't prove that, but I kind of feel that way. Wouldn't you? See, see, here's the whole point. I don't know what's going on in your life, but pray in faith. Church, listen, listen, you're living in the midst of a town that is so desperately in need of God. There's people everywhere that don't know God and they're far from God. And there's broken homes and broken families and drug addictions. And, and, and the, 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 people's lives are a mess. How are we going to do about that? We're not able to do anything about that. We don't have the power. We don't have the strength. We don't know how to help families. We don't know how to restore marriages. The world's a mess, but we have an almighty God, and he hears prayers. We ought to pray about it. We ought to be in the presence of God saying, oh, Lord, my neighbor, you got to save them. Oh, Lord, my son, you got to save him. you gotta, you got to bring my daughter back to you. Oh, God, and Lord, I'm going to do whatever you got. I'm trusting you. God is the God. And, and can I just say it like this? If you're praying, God is working. If you get nothing else out of this message, and I get that. If you are praying, God is working. That's true. Because God is a God who hears prayers. That's who he is. See, God, I've been praying for 20 years for this. And God's at work. Believe that. He says that here. He's able. He's able. He hears. The Bible says that his ear is not, his ear is not heavy that it can't, can't hear, and his hand is not short that it cannot save. You just believe. If you're praying, God's answering. God's working. And, and so then why is it taking so long? Because it's the heart. That's why it takes so long. Remember Malchus in the Bible? Do you know who that is? Malchus was the guy in the Garden of Gethsemane. The night they came to arrest Jesus, and Peter got all excited and cut off his ear. He wasn't aiming for the ear. Y'all know that, right? But he cut off his ear. Isn't it beautiful what Jesus did? Peter, calm down. And he puts Malchus's ear. I, I don't know how that happened. Did he pick it up, put it on? Or did he just like... I, I don't know, but he healed his ear. So there it is. It was gone. It was blood's everywhere. There's pain. Boop, it's back on. Can you imagine the stories that man told his grandkids? His grandkids are like, sure, Grandpa, sure. That sounds a little far-fetched there, but it really happened. Took Jesus about that much. Malchus was healed. How long did it take to heal Peter's heart? That's a whole other ballgame. See, you, you and I, when we're praying for people and we're interceding for souls, that's the realm of the heart. I don't understand it all, but God never forces. He speaks, He loves, He invites, He draws, but He doesn't force. It's important that you and I pray up a storm as a church. Don't ever forget that. When you're praying, God is working. Don't ever forget that. And just remember, the point of this passage is prayer makes a difference. One more passage, one more, one more statement here to show you. 
verse 21, closes it out with these words. Unto him be glory where? In the church. What does that mean? What does it mean? What does it mean that if you and I are full of the Spirit, full of Christ, full of love, full of God, full of prayer, there's glory in the church? What does that mean? What it means is there is evidence. Could I say proof in the family of God? that our God is real and working and moving in our generation. That's glory in the church. There ought to be evidence. There ought to be prayers being prayed and prayers being answered. Our teens need to see that, moms and dads. Our teens need to see that Christianity is real in our life and that our God is real and that he does answer prayer. I, I, I know I'm done and, and we're out of time. We need to go home tonight. But don't you agree that some of us in this room ought to start a prayer life? You're good people. You wouldn't be in church on a Wednesday night. God bless you. But some of you don't pray. It's time to start. Or maybe there was a time you had a prayer life and you've kind of given up on it. It's time to, it's time to start again. Maybe, maybe there's a big old prayer request in your life that you've gotten so discouraged about and you've kind of given up because you think God's never going to do it. It, it. It's time to get back at it because you are, you, you are on your knees operating in the realm of the Spirit of God and the spiritual warfare, and, and it makes a difference. There can be glory in the church. And, and First Baptist Church, I wanted God to work in all of your hearts, but when I come to a church to preach a revival, there, there's, a, there's another goal there as well. I want God to work in your heart and God to work in your family. But what we want to do is as a, as a body of Christ in a local way, in a local church, we want to see glory in the church where God is there. And this is the place where you get your prayers answered. And we get together and we go to God together and we bear one another's burdens and we lift one another's burdens and we pray big prayers and we see soul saved and we see marriages restored and we see young people on fire for God and, and we see God just working in all kinds of ways in the church and it's glorious it's beautiful it's amazing it's called revival and every church ought to experience it I love this text have you picked up on that I love this text I love this text for one more reason in this text he says that we ought to know the love of Christ and I close our time together by just saying to you for a moment, you really are loved by God. And dear friend, if you walked into our service tonight and, and, and you're a guest like I am, but you haven't yet met Jesus Christ and been born again the Bible way, can I just take a moment and tell you, it's in the heart of the God of heaven that you would know his son Jesus Christ and experience forgiveness of sins and have everlasting life. And here's what you need to know. There was a cross 2,000 years ago where Jesus Christ died for our sins and for the sins of the whole world. And, and they killed him. But he didn't die just an ordinary death because he was the son of God. And hanging on a cross 2,000 years ago, he bore in his body our sins. And they took him off that cross after he died and they buried him. And three days later, Jesus rose from the dead by his own power so that you would know that he was more than a man. And so that he could offer you forgiveness of sins and everlasting life and you would know it was valid. It's a Wednesday night revival service. And can I tell you tonight, I've talked to the church about praying to our God who is real and good and powerful and almighty. But I would say to you tonight, God wants you to come to know him through his son, Jesus Christ. And the way you do that is you come into his presence in prayer. He's real. I don't know that you need to do this, but you could. God, I don't know you, but I heard that your son, Jesus, died for my sins and was buried and rose from the dead and I want you to be my savior I want forgiveness and eternal life you can know you're going to heaven when you leave this building you can be part of the family of God but God won't force it on you he won't he wants you to be saved I believe I could prove that to you from the Bible God wants you to be saved and he's made a way for you to be saved and it's Wednesday night and the revival's coming to an end but if you don't know Christ why not tonight turn to him Believe on him, call on him, trust in him. You'll find out this, he is a wonderful savior. And that's the truth. Would you bow your head and close your eyes? My
wife's not here tonight, so could we have a pianist come to the piano for me and just maybe, maybe just play whatever the Lord's leading you there. And how many of you in the service tonight would say, hey, Dave, I know for sure that I'm saved through Jesus Christ. Raise your hand good and high if you know that for sure. How many of you would say tonight, Dave, I just raised my hand knowing that I'm saved, but I'm also going to be honest, I need to start a prayer life. I really realize I need to start a prayer life. Raise your hand if that's true in your life tonight. I need to start a prayer life. God bless you. How many of you would say, Dave, I need to renew a prayer life. I need to renew it. I did it one time. I need to renew it. I really need to renew it. Raise your hand, would you? And how many of you would say tonight, Dave, there's some needs in my life and my family and my home and my health that I've kind of gotten discouraged about, but I see tonight that God is real and I want to really earnestly, fervently pick it up and trust God and bring this request to Him. I need a miracle. It's a big matter, but I've, I've been encouraged not to start praying about it. Lift your hand if that's true in your life tonight, would you? Praise the Lord. And is there anybody here who would say, you know, Dave, Dave, listen, the fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, Dave, I don't know that I'm going to heaven. I have no idea for sure that I know Jesus Christ. But I'd like to be part of the family of God and know God and know my sins are forgiven. And, and I've heard about it. Somebody's been talking to me about it. I want Jesus Christ to be my God and my Savior. Would you remember me in prayer too? Just lift a hand if that's you tonight. I'll just see a hand. I'll pray for you. I want to know I'm going to heaven. Anybody like that at all tonight? Don't know Jesus, but I want to know. I want to know. I want to know. I want, God bless you over there, buddy. And take your hand down. I don't know your heart, son, but God does. You can know Jesus Christ, and we want you to. Nobody knows you raised your hand but me. Would you look at me just a moment? Could I just talk to you just a moment, son? Would you? Man, you're important to God. You know that? Would you like to know him tonight? You can. If you'll call on him and trust him to be your savior, he'll forgive your sins and save you. Would you be willing to do that tonight? I, I hope you will. Would you just right there do it? Would you just bow your head right now and say, God, it's true, I'm a sinner. And oh, Jesus, I want you to be my Savior. Son, would you, would you just turn to Christ? He's real. Just say, Jesus, forgive my sins. I believe you rose from the dead. I trust you. Will you pray like that, son? Nod your head at me if you will, will you? Amen. Pray that. And I'll come back in a moment and I'll have a word of prayer with you, all right? But just pray that tonight. It's wonderful to know you're saved. Let's stand together, shall we? Was there another one here tonight? Well, if I missed you, you can be saved. Let's, let's stand together. If you want Jesus, listen, if you need to kneel tonight, you know I don't push people to kneel. Maybe this would be a great way to close the revival to say, Lord, I want to start a prayer life. Maybe you ought to come and kneel and make it a commitment. I don't know that you should. But let's all pray. Bow your and close your eyes. Call on the Lord. Make a commitment to God. Say, Lord, pour out your spirit on our church. Lord, help our church to see a multitude saved. Oh, Lord, move in our church. Bless our generation. I, I think maybe there was another hand somebody said. I missed you if I did. But can I tell you, if you want to know Jesus Christ tonight while we're praying, turn to him. Would you raise your hand again if that was you? I, I raised my hand too because I want to know I'm saved. Is there somebody else tonight? If you raised it a moment ago, raise it again. Would you? Let me see it. Would you? Believe on Jesus. Turn to him. Pray like I asked this young man to pray. Oh, God, I'm a sinner, and I know Jesus died for me. I want him to save me. Pray about that. Turn to Christ. Church, would you take a moment and pray? He's just going to play. Maybe raise your hands if you want to. Maybe get on your knees if you want to. But let's make commitments as we close this revival. I'm going to start a prayer life. I'm going to pray about big needs in my life. I want God to work in my church and in my generation. He is able. He is good. Prayer works. Let's take a moment. Seek the Lord. right this way would you please if you're done praying 
Thanks for hearing God's word this week. Church family, you've been a gracious audience. Thanks for listening so kindly and patiently. So many things to say about prayer in there. There's strength in praying together. There's, there's so many things. Let's believe God in our generation. Don't be a discouraged church. God is at work in your church. Did you all know that? God is here. He's moving. He's working. We've had people saved this week. He's touched us. Believe it, believe it, believe it. Rejoice in it. And uh, just um, keep going. Pastor's a great guy, isn't he? Get behind him, pray for him, and serve the Lord together. What a great opportunity you guys have to impact this whole village. Pastor, are you going to come? All right, my friend. God bless you. Well, I like to finish when the Lord gives us something special by singing about it. Uh, we have a guitarist. Somebody going to play. Those who want to sing. Organist. It's not very good if it's just a couple of us. I think we should close by singing about our God again, that he can answer prayer, and he is a great God. Did God meet you this week somewhere, something, some point? Hope he has. Sing with me, Behold Our God, and in a minute we'll, we'll close.
may all glory go to God in his church throughout all ages, world without end. I hope that this week God has done something special in your heart and that the God you need is the God who fills you and it is the God who you pray to and it is the God who you glorify. Thank you so much for coming. Tonight, one that's over, uh, well, now it's over. So uh, I'm going to invite you to head out to the lobby. There's Culver's ice cream there and uh, have some and enjoy your evening. And I'm just so grateful to you for being here. And perhaps you'd want to tell Dave Young how blessed you are to have him. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening.